friends welcome back to another video tutorial today i am going to share with you another interesting topic on kaushal nanoparticle in bioimaging applications okay let's start basically nanoparticles can be categorized based on yes. multiple material that is uh, simple and kaushal or composite nanoparticles okay in general these simple nanoparticles which are made from a single material whereas these uh, composites or kaushal nanoparticles which are composed of two or more materials okay an ideal kaushal nano uh, particles that uh, consist of a core that is inner metal material and a shell that is outer layer material okay so uh, this uh, can be consist of wide range of different combinations like uh, in close interactions like uh, inorganic inorganic or inorganic organic or inorganic organic material okay so the choice of this uh, shell material of the kaushal nanoparticle is generally depend upon the application and the usages okay so in this picture we can see different types of kaushal nanoparticle because uh, depending upon the synthesis approach we can uh, synthesize different kind of uh, kaushal nanoparticle uh, that is uh, spherical kaushal nanoparticle hexagonal kaushal nanoparticle multiple small core material coated by single shell material uh, nano matryoshka material and movable core within hollow shell material like different uh, kind of kaushal nanoparticles are there so these kind of um, nanoparticles uh, nano material we can synthesize from different synthesis approach so some of the synthesis methods are chemical synthesis chemical vapor deposition laser induced assembly self assembly colloidal aggregation and flame deposition and growth okay next is the importance of kaushal nanoparticles so this kaushal nanoparticles are highly um, functional material with modified properties so some of the modified properties are less uh, cytotoxicity good bio and cytocompatibility better conjugation with other bioactive molecules increase thermal and chemical stability increase in dispersibility okay so because of these kind of modified properties these kaushal nanoparticles are uh, widely used in different uh, fields such as electronics biomedical pharmaceutical optics and catalysis in this section i am going to discuss more about the bioimaging uh, particularly this uh, mri Uh, imaging okay so basically this mid resonance imaging is one of the most powerful bioimaging tool and which uh, produce high quality image of the internal organ of uh, our body okay so this uh, mri is work um, based on the principle of nuclear magnetic resonance and they can it can produce a detailed digital picture of uh, the organ cells soft tissues or bones okay so uh, when uh, if you want to uh, enhance the image con image uh, we have to add the um, contrast agent that is uh, before uh, um, uh before uh, going to the image the patient uh, being injected with this contrast agent and this uh, this will be uh, highlight the abnormal uh, cells uh, so especially if you want to differentiate the normal and abnormal cells um, we need to uh, inject the uh, contrast agent okay so the various uh, parameters also affect the contrast uh, between different tissues uh, such as these um, 
longitudinal relaxation time, transverse relaxation time, and uh, the spin density. Okay, so uh, the most commonly used contrast enhancement agent uh, in MRI is gadolinium based compounds. Okay, so this um, MRI con uh, contrast agent. Uh, work uh, based on uh, the shortening the T1 relaxation time of protons which is located nearby it. Okay, so normally this lanthanide and this transition metal series uh, which shows this paramagnetic property. So because of that, this, uh, these are the ideal candidates for the MRI contrast agent. And among that, uh, among the different metal and compounds, this gadolinium based uh, contrast agent is the best because uh, it has large magnetic moment. Okay. Uh, in the first one, this caution nanoparticle based T1 contrast agent. The T1 contrast agent uh, that is uh, that give positive imaging by differentiating fat from water. And here this water in darker contrast and the fat in brighter contrast. Okay, so the T1 relaxation time is shortened in the presence of these kind of paramagnetic uh, substances. Okay, so in that uh, these gadolinium based um, compounds like uh, uh, oxides and fluorides and sodium gadolinium phosphates. Uh, which are um, widely used as a MRI contrast agent. So this nanoparticle, uh, so one of the uh, researchers, they reported that this uh, gadolinium is coated with this silica shell, and that is a silica gadolinium caution nanoparticle, which uh, shows uh, enhanced performance in MRI, MR image. Okay, so uh, the problem uh, if these gadolinium compounds are mo mostly used as a contrast agent, um, then we get a, a good uh, uh, enhanced image. But the one problem is associated with this this compound is uh, this is uh, become toxic when it in ionic form. Okay, so. Uh, Recently, various other contrast agents based on oxides and chlorides of iron and copper have been identified uh, for uh, an alternative for this uh, gadolinium compound. Okay, so this um, so one of the researchers they developed this and, and engineered this uh, iron oxide based caution nanoparticle uh, for uh, this MRI contrast agent. Okay, next is the caution nanoparticle based T2 contrast agent. So, in this uh, T2 contrast agent, which permit a negative contrast enhancement and also darker image of the region of interest. Okay, so this T2 uh, in this T2 contrast agent, this water is brighter contrast and this fat in darker contrast. Okay, so one of the very first um, T2 caution uh, based uh, T2 contrast agent is dextrin coated ion oxide nanoparticle. So that shows the um, uh, that was the first used as a uh, MRI contrast agent. And um, another is a super paramagnetic ion oxide um, that is the size uh, in between 50 to 500 nanometer and ultra small super paramagnetic ion oxide nanoparticle uh, size less than 50 nanometer uh, also have been uh, extremely used as a contrast agent for the MRI okay so uh, this is all about the magnetic uh, caution nanoparticles in MRI Thank you for watching this video. If you like this tutorial, please share with your friends and contacts. Thank you.